Hi guys, Howard here with Apple Scruffs from George Harrison's All Things Must Pass album. I actually got a request for this a couple of weeks ago and I thought, right, that's a cool song. You know, it's just him on acoustic guitar, harmonica, and uh, some great vocals and slide guitar. But what I'm doing in this lesson is just covering that main acoustic guitar part. And it's a uh, rhythm monster. It's just relentless strumming for however long the song is, <laughs> over three minutes, maybe about three minutes long. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break it up into neatly defined sections, okay? So let's start with the intro, which is all instrumental. It's just George on acoustic guitar. So the chords we have for this intro are G to D, G to D again, and then we're going to have E minor to D three times. again twice okay so the chords are pretty easy pretty standard chords uh, but what's important is what's happening in the right hand here uh, he's got this relentless so that's what you want to wrap your head around first and he does vary it you know he might go you know there's little variations in there but what I want to point out about this is he's emphasizing these chord changes on the upbeat, so they're falling on the upstrokes, okay? So moving from the G to the D, we would have this. So you can see that my hand keeps swinging, but you want to emphasize that. And again, learn to vary it as you uh, make your way through this tune, because he certainly does throughout, and we'll talk about those as we get into it a little bit more. But that's the first thing you want to establish because that's what he's doing the majority of the time. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. So you're kind of skipping that one downstroke when you get to the D chord to emphasize the upbeat. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, 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 up. And then we do the same thing from E minor to D, and we play that three times. is the intro so when you're playing it at tempo it really sounds kind of nice okay so once again G D G D E minor to D three times and then G to D again twice so let me play that up to tempo into the first verse of the song. But one more thing I want to point out is you'll hear him kind of do those upbeat accents once in a while. For instance, on the D chord, you'll hear him do this occasionally. Or even really popping the chord. So what he's emphasizing there is those upstrokes. Let me do it sort of exaggerated so you can see exactly where it's at. Once again, you can see that my hand is still swinging, right? But you're emphasizing those upstrokes. So you'll hear that occasionally, and I'll try to point it out as we make our way through it. So once again, that's the intro, and now we are into the verse. So for the verses now, um, we're back on the G chord, of course, uh, but this time we're traveling from G to A minor seventh. Very nice chord change. So we're traveling from G to A minor 7th twice. Then we're going to travel from an E minor 7th to an E minor 6th. Very George Harrison.
Morrison. And then we're going to have a C with a G in the bass. And then an E diminished chord, demented chord, an E diminished chord. And that's going to be one of those chords I just mentioned where he's going to emphasize the upbeats. Okay, so let me play the verse. So you can see, once again, he emphasized those upstrokes on those diminished chords. But other than that, it is the same thing. In other words, he's changing the chords on that upbeat. So from G to A minor, we have down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. From the E minor seventh to the E minor sixth, it's the same thing. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Straight to C with the G in the bass. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. So there's that E diminished chord, and he emphasizes those upstrokes. And then back to G to D twice. Okay, so let me play the verse a bit slower for you. going to do at this point is he's going to repeat the verse okay he's going to play exactly what we just played but at the tail end of it instead of playing G to D twice he plays G to D once and then he sits on the G so that he can make his way into the chorus so the full double verse then is played like so So let's talk about that as well. So the chorus actually starts with that E diminished chord. We go from E diminished to G, E diminished to G again, and then he sneaks in a B7 right there. Uh, that sometimes gets missed, but if you listen to the recording, you'll definitely hear it. So we've got once again E diminished G, E diminished G, B7. I'll explain where that's at, and then E minor to A7. So the chorus is played like this. And it's back to that, okay? So let's go over that. We're on the E diminished. And again, it's that same rhythmic pattern where you're just strumming away and changing to the next chord on that upbeat. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. So there's where the little trick is, right? So the first time we have just what we've already done, the same strumming pattern, I mean. So what I did there is when you get to the G the second time, up, up, down is probably the best way to go. And again, at the tempo he's traveling, you don't really notice those little pauses too much. Up, up, down, down, up, down. So it's up, up, down on the G chord, and then down, up, down on the B7. And then it's E minor. So I 
went from that E minor to an A7, and you can see he's sitting on both of those chords long enough to play that full strumming pattern, but he's still emphasizing that upbeat. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down. Etc. And you can play it loose. Of course, he varies it slightly, but that is the most important part of the tune in a way. It's this rhythm that he's playing, and that's why I keep emphasizing it, because it can really hang you up if you're not quite sure what he's doing. So here's the uh, chorus again, played slow, and then I'll do it up to tempo. And so let's move forward from there. Now from here out, what becomes really important is the arrangement, okay? Uh, because in true Harrison style, it's not sort of your conventional song, you know, breakdown, right? So anyway, he goes back to the intro and he plays it just as he did before, except he doubles up the E minor to the D section. Uh, let me go ahead and play that. And uh, I think it'll be pretty clear, but I will get into some detail. kind of see what happened right there. We went G to D, G to D again, and then E minor to D three times just like he did before, and then back to G and D twice like he did before in the original intro, but then he goes back and does the E minor bit again. And that sets him up for the next verse. So the only thing I would point out about that part is you can see that he's really emphasizing those D chords. It's happening with the with the harmonica, with the harp. And uh, so you can hear on the recording that he really brings that out. And uh, so I do it by kind of popping the chords, sort of, you know, releasing the pressure and re-engaging it with those upstrokes. So that sounds kind of cool, right? So the second intro, I guess we can call it that, is... verse. So what we have here is another double verse, like we had uh, out the gate. And uh, like I said, at this point, the arrangement becomes really important because there's these little subtleties that he throws in there. So he does a double verse just like he did before, but unlike the first time where he sat on the G the second time around and went to the chorus, he's not going to do that. He's going to play that D, or excuse me, that G to D twice, okay? And then he's going to go to the instrumental part with the slide guitars and all the rest. So, picking up from where we left off, we're into the uh, next verse, In the Fog and in the Rain, and it'll be played like this.
as I said, he actually plays the G to the D twice at the end instead of sitting on the G chord, okay? And then we get into the instrumental section, as I said, with the slides and the harmonica and everything going on. So let's get into that. So that's what's going on underneath the uh, slide solo and the uh, harp part. So let's talk about that. We've got E minor to D three times. Do it again with those accents. Then we travel from G to D7. He's just sitting on that D7, and you can see where I'm putting that accent. Once again, it's always emphasizing the upbeat. But let me play that G to D7 slowly. those accents are hiding out and then he moves to the uh, E diminished chord again and again there's a lot of emphasis on that upbeat and then he just starts building it all right let me break that down exactly as he plays it okay So you can basically count eight, if you know what I mean, with those accents. One, two, three. Right? Kind of emphasizing those upstrokes like an eight count, so to speak. Okay? And then just alternate strokes. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. So we get this. And he starts it out a little bit lighter and then kind of lays into it. So once again, that little instrumental section is... another chorus. So the last chorus is played exactly as before. It starts with the uh, E diminished chord and it just moves through the exact same changes. And then he just loops the intro as the song fades out. Play it as long as you want and uh, just maybe end it end it on a G chord okay so there you go Apple Scruffs from George Harrison's All Things Must Pass album I've done a lot of uh, his slide solos so maybe I'll get around to this one it's got some cool harmonies in it and whatnot but for now there you go the main rhythm acoustic guitar from Apple Scruffs <laughs>